Hello everyone. Um, I thought I should focus on this sensor here. That's an AMOS, AMOS meter. Okay, the air comes in that way. Okay, and the purpose of an AMOS meter is to read the bus of the air that is going in here and then send that message through the signal wire to the engine ECU in order to be able to calculate the amount of fuel that is needed in order to maintain the stoichiometric ratio. So, um, this one is a four wire sensor, okay? So, all I want to do here is to try and figure out and see what each, each wire does, um, if we can maybe establish how this works. Right, uh, the ignition key is on. Um, just want to check my meter here. My battery is going down, the lights are on. So I'll go quick here. I don't have a battery maintainer. So number one, we have got about 4.3 volts. I think it's because my, my, my battery is down. That's why it's saying 4.3. So 4.3 volts, just work with what we have. And then we go to number two, which is the orange wire. We've got four volt, 4.3 again. So 4.3 volts for the orange wire. And then we go to the blue wire. Uh, 0 0.4 volts, okay. So that's 0 0.4 volts. And we go to the purple. Four point one. Okay. Four point one volts. Right. So what I'm gonna do is I'll turn the ignition key off and then right now the the sensor has been connected pin number one is giving me 1.9 volts so pin one number one which is yellow it's 1.9 volts so number two is orange is blue and four is violet that's purple so if we go to pin number two uh, pin number two is two volts okay two point one maximum there I think it's because of my battery Right, because my battery is going down, I need to. I'm going to test it now with this, with the sensor connected. Instead of key on, engine off, I want to do it with the engine running. Okay, so pin number one. There'll be very, very little difference. Is 1.86 volts, roughly 1.9. That's fine. So. We go to pin number two. That's about 2.1 volts. That's the maximum that we recorded there. It's 2.1 volts. And then if you notice, then pin three. Got 0 0.4, 0 0.4. 44 was the highest 0 0.44 volts and then we come to we've got 0 0.96 so paper wire is 0 0.96 Volts.
I, I just want to start afresh. You see all these readings that I've done? I've just noticed that my ground wasn't good. So what I want to do is, let me start again and check and see. You see now, my battery is saying 12.6. The other time it was 11 point something. So battery voltage, 12.6, that's a fully charged battery, okay? I was wondering what's going on here. So I want to do these readings and see if there's going to be a difference. Maybe it's just me, but I didn't like my ground. So we have got 4.9 volts, right? Before we had 4.3. So I'm going to put these ones in a box. Just want to show you here. This is good. It happened. Just want to show you the importance of having a good ground. So um, now we have got 4.9. The sensor is disconnected. Key on engine off. Okay. Pin 1 is 4.9. Pin 2 is 5 volts. There you see. I hope we are going to learn from this the importance of good ground i mentioned this in my videos i almost got caught myself zero point zero one zero point zero one volts that's pin three the last pin okay the last pin we have five volts all right so the last pin we have five volts people look at the difference in that these discrepancies are serious you you in electronics you do not want to work with values like this because your ground is wrong it will throw you off you start going on a tangent so it's good that i noticed quickly that my ground was bad okay so I'll turn the ignition key off here and then the reason why I'm turning the ignition key off you don't want to plug things you know when the ignition key is on don't do that with electronics turn your ignition key off then plug whatever sensor it is you know you don't want voltages just to spike like that you can actually cause serious problems so now I have it connected I'm going back again turn the ignition key uh, so here engine off still right but with the sensor connected let's start with uh, number one we have got 3.9 volts look at these values here okay so we have got 3.9 volts that's for pin number one now the sensor is connected mind you go to the second pin which is orange okay let me take these out of the way we have five volts look at this one we're 2.1 oh my we have five volts on pin number two and then we go to pin number three the blue wire we have 0 0.01 0 0.01 volts and then we go to the purple wire, which is the last one. Mind you, this is a four-wire sensor. We've got 2.6. We've got 2.6 volts. Look at the discrepancies. Does that help you to realize that in electronics, ground, a good, healthy ground is important? Please take note of this and learn a lesson from this one. It is good that it happened while we are working together like this. If it can happen to me, it can happen to you as well. So don't laugh at me and say, hey, what was wrong with you? I did check. I thought it was the battery, 11 point something, but I realized, hang on here, my ground wasn't right. So it's good to go back and make sure that you verify the reading. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, I'll analyze all these sensor connected uh, sensor connected uh, key on engine running all right so one two three four so let's say yellow orange blue and purple 
let me run the engine so it's 4.4 volts can you see that yep yeah. 4.4 volts clear thank you so that'll be 4.4 volts the engine is now running we are idling okay we are idling 700 800 revs per minute we've got five volts on the orange wire all right and then we go to the blue wire it's supposed to be all ground 0 0.02 which is healthy enough 0 0.02 volts that's brilliant and we go to the purple wire we have got 2.7 volts on the purple wire okay 2.7 volts on the purple wire so what i want to do now i want to rev this engine to 2000 rpm i want you to keep your eyes um, on the mark on the on the voltmeter so we are on pin one here all right this is a signal wire i can tell you right now pin one is a signal wire pin four is a signal wire this blue one here that's a ground which is common because there are two sensors that are here we have got an air mass meter um we also have a temperature sensor all right so this is a signal wire yellow is a signal wire so we want to figure out which one is a signal wire for the temperature sensor and which one it is is for the air mass meter that's what we want to do that ground there the blue wire it is common to both sensors and that orange one here you notice it's staying at five volts that one doesn't change that's the power then to the air mass meter okay remember the power for the for the for the temperature sensor will go down immediately when you connect because of the two resistors so we can establish right away that the orange one which is staying at five volts is the power for the air mass meter but i want to rev now i want to take these two signals and rev and see what how they behave at 2000 revs a minute Right, now I'm on another signal wire, okay? We are reading 2.7 there. So I'm gonna rev uh, and keep it at 2,000 revs just for, for a minute. And then you watch how the voltage is going to change. Right, to finish off my video on the air mass meter i'm using my uh, fox well here so i have gone in i'm running the engine uh, at idle and what i've done i've selected the math um, it's showing in hertz that's this the frequency um, that's it's showing the frequency and i'm also showing the intake you know temperature uh, and also showing the voltage this will prove my diagnosis when I was showing you um, that a pin number four that purple wire was the signal wire for the uh, intake air temperature sensor you can see that we have got 2.58 volts there so that confirms um, what I was telling you just by working with a, a voltmeter now I'm using the scan tool to try and prove 
what I was saying to you. So, yeah, these things, uh, you know, you have to prove your work, especially when you come into diagnostics. You have to prove your work. I will have to show you at some stage, you know, how to test the math using, you know, this frequency. Uh, you can either use voltage, you can use frequency. So it's good that this one is a frequent one. Once um, I get a chance again, I will be working on this frequency just to show you, you know, how you test, you know, frequency. Right, so to conclude, before I conclude this video, I thought maybe I should take you to the wiring diagram. So this is the A mass meter, okay? Uh, you can see that's a airflow, right? That's an airflow sensor. That's a MAF, all right? So according to this diagram here, we've got two sensors in here. There's that one here. You see that? That's a variable resistor. So that's your temperature sensor. So it is connected to the purple and gray wire. So this purple and gray wire, if we follow it, it is going straight to the ECU. So pin 15 with ignition key on, uh, engine not running, okay, we found, we found 5 volts, right, which is correct. That one will be 5 volts with the ignition key on. So that's the power side of the temperature, air temperature sensor, all right. So this, this air temperature sensor, so that's one pin here it has got the second pin here is the second wire here and if you notice this dot here what this dot refers to it shows that these this wire and this wire are connected together so this is that common ground that i was telling you about so these two sensors this is your a mass meter this is your temperature sensor they share the same ground this is demonstrated by this dot here Okay, so you'll notice that even on our readings right from the start, uh, with the sensor disconnected, key on engine of the blue wire was 0 0.01 volts. And with the sensor connected, key on engine off, the blue wire was 0 0.01. And then 0 0.02 with the engine running. So this one is our ground, and it's perfect ground, just 200 millivolts, perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. Up to 300, I'm okay with that. So there you go. So that's that's our ground there, all right? So I have explained the, the other sensor. Let me come to this one here, right? So uh, pin number two is for the air mass meter. Pin number three is shared also. It is used for the AMAS meter. Pin number one is for AMAS meter. So pin number two, we established pin number two that uh, with the sensor disconnected, it was five volts. With the sensor connected, it remained at five volts. Okay, take note of these two. It remained at five volts. It didn't change. So that's the power. All right, that's the power for the air mass meter. It is the power, right? I hope that is clear. So if we have the power on number two, the ground on number three, this one remains then to be the signal wire. So pin number four is the power and the signal wire for the temperature sensor. Pin number one, is the signal wire for the air mass meter. Take note of that, okay? So that's the signal wire for the air mass meter. You will notice one thing, a signal wire is never shared with anything. You can share a ground between two sensors, okay? You can share a ground between two sensors, but you can't share a signal wire. You can share power, you can actually share power. The, the reason why they don't share power here is because the power for the temperature sensor goes down whenever you connect the sensor. That's why they are not shared. Otherwise, if it wasn't that, these two could just share one wire, okay? But because this one changes, the temperature sensor is not shared with anything. Its power is not shared with anything. So when you are diagnosing your 5 volts reference, when your 5 volt reference is down and you are diagnosing it, please 
do not come and diagnose it on the temperature sensor because you get false reading. Don't do it on the temperature sensor. Do it on any other sensor uh, rather than the temperature sensor. So there is our signal wire. Okay. Yellow is our signal wire. So I could tell straight away here. All right. It, it may be difficult when you're starting with the sensor disconnect because you've got three, five volts, one, two, three. And then you're wondering, so what, 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 which, is, which one is what? But the moment I connect, the moment I connected, okay, and the moment I connected, the signal wire dropped down slightly. Just take note of that. From 5 volts, it went down slightly to 3.9. All right? Uh, look at the signal wire for the temperature sensor. It went almost half. All right? It went almost half about 2 point some 2.6 volts all right so be, once i looked at these two i knew straight away that this one is a signal wire this one is a signal wire this one is a ground i, I picked it from here that's my ground when i came here solidified that's my ground and then i knew this one was the power because i know how the two temperatures sorry i know how these two sensors work i knew that each one of the five volt reference that will stay up whether connected or disconnected if it stays up at five volts and doesn't change i knew straight away that that one is for the air mass meter why because i know that the five volt for the temperature sensor will go down immediately when you connect so that's how i knew that this five volt here on on the orange wire is for the air mass meter even before i looked at the wiring diagram I, I, I deduced that straight away. So, um, I hope this is, this is going to help you. I'm, I'm just trying to introduce something here that I know is, can be a problem um, with some of us, as we, especially the young diagnosticians, the young technicians who are come, upcoming technicians. I, I know that it's not easy to, you know, to grasp these principles. But just follow what I'm showing you. This, this sensor is not faulty. I'm just trying to show you a good sensor. This is a good sensor. All right? There's nothing wrong. But I wanted to show you the principles of how to test it. All right? I hope this is going to help you. So um, what I did then, I went, um, I went ahead and revved the engine at 2000 rpm then i tapped into the yellow wire and also into the purple wire these are my two signals all right and i revved the engine fully and then i got about 4.5 volts that's how you test your air mass meter if you want to see that it's working um it will not give you five volts but it, it will give you about four point something volts once you rev put your foot down okay just for a split second, put your foot down and then record. If I had an oscilloscope here, all right, you would see a spike of voltage and then it comes down, all right. But I just caught it on on a, on a voltmeter. So here is how you test an air mass meter. This one has got four wires. You will come across others that have got five wires. Do not panic. Just work on them and and you'll be able to uh, deduce what each wire does especially with this kind of knowledge i like to lay it out like this okay so in concluding i'm going back again to remind you the importance of a good ground look at these figures how we were lost completely lost because my ground wasn't good the moment i noticed that look at the difference of these numbers and these numbers the difference here is good ground, bad ground. Bad ground here, good ground here. Well, when we came here, everything was good. Our ground was good. I had corrected it. I left it like this so that I could have started a new video and, and, and you know, and pretended that this didn't happen. But I thought, you know what? These things, you know, are good for our learning. You know, uh, I know sometimes we, we polish videos and I, I like to put mistakes in there so that people can also realize that I'm human. I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. You know, I don't know it all. I'm also learning. But the little that I know, 
I thought I should share uh, with you guys out there. Thank you for your support that you have given me. Uh, we have reached, um, you know, one th 104 subscribers. That's a milestone to me. This uh, platform is only, it's not even two months, okay? And we have reached uh, over 100 subscribers now. Please continue to subscribe, continue to share the videos with other people and encourage them to subscribe. If you have got any questions concerning this video, please don't hesitate to uh, send me a message or, you know, just uh, send me a comment and remember to click the like button and also the subscription button, sorry, the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos from me. I thank you.